Let's wait one second for everybody to join. Okay. Okay. Um, let's share the screen. Okay, all right. Can you guys see the screen now? Yes. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, let's see here. Um, regarding today's um, uh, thing and like our material coverage, this is where we are at. So we have done covered um, uh, insertion sort and selection sort, and they are both and square algorithms, quadratic time, theta and square algorithms. We also covered merge sort. In class and quick sort, which you um, uh, covered in online lectures. Okay, they are both um, n log n algorithms with quick sort being and square in worst case okay so now um, um, there are a bunch of questions arise one is can we go lower than n log n okay that's one question that arises um, so the the short answer to that is no but that answer no has to be properly worded otherwise um, uh, it risks being a wrong answer and i'll explain that in a second but in terms of coverage um so before we talk about that um so compile um, uh, you know collect any questions you have about quick sort that you did not understand well from the lectures uh, by the instructor Abdul Bari, and if um, then I will make a short video answering those questions. So you can send me these questions in email. Uh, if you want to say to me right now uh, verbally, I can write down. I can take notes. Uh, whatever you feel in your understanding of quick sort is weak, what you've not understood, uh, I, some of you, I believe, said that the code for the pivot operation, right? I think that was the question some people had. So there's a code for pivot operation. Uh, there are a bunch of ways of doing that. Uh, there's one easy way of doing that, easier than what Abdul Bari does, although his is pretty standard as well. Um, uh, yeah, so I will make a short video slash videos uh, answering those questions for you um once i receive all the requests from you guys on what you've not understood with quick sort okay um now uh quick sort just like merge sort can also be done recursively and can be done iteratively or bottom up we will not look at the bottom up version of quick sort because it's much messier to write than the bottom up or iterative version of merge sort so we will just uh, be happy with just the understanding the recursive version of quick sort which is not that hard to understand at least conceptually okay 
Are there any questions about any of that? Um, so, so that I can move forward. Yes, no. Can we perform better than n log n? Okay. You can be posting, by the way, your questions, whatever you have. Um, short answer is no. Wrong answer. Um, no, as long as our methodology of sorting is based on pairwise comparison of elements of the array. Okay. Um, so far, our main way of sorting, uh, sorry, our four algorithms that we've done, done in sorting, selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort, quick sort, it, they rest on checking, you know, like you check, right? If, a, if AI is less than AJ, if A1 is bigger than this, then update the min or, if AJ is less than AK, then move the swap the AJ and AK. You're always comparing two elements of array at a time, right? All the comparisons are two elements of array at a time. And based on that, you say, if this happens here, you move here, you swap this, you move this, you delete this, whatever it is, you update the min, you update the max. So we all, in algorithms, you always have to be careful. When we say like the most, most efficient way of doing this is this, Make sure you specify exactly what is it you're talking about. Um, and you will see examples right after we prove that we cannot do less than n log n. I'm going to show you an algorithm that does it in linear time and n time. OK? So like, wait, what? You just said n log n is the lowest, and then you're going to show us the algorithm that's n time? Well, if you look, focus on my long answer, it must be the case that that n time algorithm Linear time algorithm must not be based on pairwise comparisons of elements of sorting, uh, elements of the array, because otherwise you can't do less than a log n. So if there are no questions uh, about what I've just said, let's move forward to pro proving that. Any questions? So I guess no. No? Okay. Thanks, Mahmoud Adnan. All right. Now, the way I'm going to prove it to you, I usually, when I teach this in class, I play a game where I challenge people that um, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, okay. Challenge. When you sort an array of four elements using less than six comparisons, okay. using less than six comparisons, can you can we do that? Um, so the way I do it, I I I I play this game. I uh, I, I have a piece of paper with me, which I'm not showing to people. And I just write on the on the board, I just write A, B, C, D, right? Or A1, A2, A3. People ask me questions. They decide as a class, like, is A less than B? And I say either yes or no. Then they say, is B less than C? And I also say yes or no. Then is this less than this? And then they have to, after only five or fewer questions, they have to tell me the sorted order of the Play that game with you. I'm going to be showing you on the side what I'm doing. So let's say uh, somebody has been given four unknown numbers, right? Because think of it in computer, right? A computer is not like a human that can look at the four numbers like with two eyes. Oh, the numbers are four, one, three, two. Ah, okay, okay. So swap this here, right? It it looks at its cell at a time. It looks this cell to this cell, right? And um, and then it comes back and compares that first cell back to the third cell and the third cell to the fifth cell, right? Based on whatever algorithm you write. So what I'm going to do here, 
think of it in terms of size, there are four factorial ways behind the scenes this could be in. Okay. And let's say the numbers are one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter. Even if they are one, three, eight, and nineteen, there are four factorial orders. The biggest could be first, the second biggest could be first, and the second, third biggest could be yeah. Understand what I'm saying? So one, two, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna write all of these. Um uh one, two, three, four. Let me just make some space. One, two, four, three, one, three, two, four, one, three, four, two. One four factorial is twenty-four, right? So one four two three and one four three two. And then I start with one, two, one, four, three, two, three, one, four, two, three, four, one. Finally, what is it? Uh two, four, one, three, two, four, three, one. And let's go over here. And then over here we have starting with three, three one two four three one four two three two one four three two four one three four one two three four two one um four one two three four one three two four two one three Four two three one, four three one two, four three two one. Okay, these are the twenty-four different orders that A B C D could be in, right? What am I going to do? Let me again give you the big picture here. I'm going to show you that how the smartest algorithm guy in the world. I'm going to make him ages on this thing. If he tries to compare, if he tries to sort the array A B C D in five comparisons or less, I'm going to. Give him answers, yes, no, to his comparison question in such a way that he is forced to make six comparisons or more. Okay. What does that mean? That I'm going to do it uh, maliciously. Yes, maliciously, but honestly. I'm malicious in the sense that this is called devil's argument or adversarial argument. It's a way of proving things in algorithms. I'm malicious in the sense that I want him to ask more and more questions, but I'm not going to be dishonest. Yani if at some point earlier I said A is less than B. And then I also at some point less said B is less than C. And at some point he asked me A is less than C, which is of course a useless question because if A is less than B and B is less than C, then obviously A is less than C. But if he does ask that, I'm not going to tell him no, A is not less than C, which would be contradictory. So my information will not be contradictory. I will be consistent. You cannot accuse me of lying or being contradictory, but I'm just trying to make his life hard, which will show you that what will that prove? That will prove that if you have, if you're, if you have, Algorithm that supposedly does it in few um, comparisons, it cannot always do the job correctly. For some it, permutations of input, it will not be able to sort correctly, and thus proving that you know you need a certain minimum number of comparison. Hal um, uh, what if what if uh, he were to say, oh, the sorted order is just A B C D, the original order. Let's say it's a dumb comp uh, algorithm. It's really dumb. It's a wrong algorithm. Anyway, it says you, you give it, it gives it, you give it A B C D. It says, yeah, the sorted order is A B C D. Actually, he will be right if, if it was one, two, three, four. But I'm going, I'm going to deliberately say, even if I had thought of one, two, three, four, I will, I'll say no. I had three, one, two, four in mind. A B C D is not the sorted version of three, one, two, four. I'm sorry. So go back, go back and fix your algorithm. Three, one, two, four will not be sorted by, and that's fine for me to say that as long as I can show you an input that cannot be sorted. In your claim, so let's start with enough talking. Do you guys understand the setup? And if you don't, as I do it, you will see what what I'm going to do. So let's say he asks me first, is A less than B? Okay. So what I'm going to do is A less than B. If you right now, if you count here, uh, in which ones A is less than B? The A is less than B in here. Uh, actually. A is less than B in all of these and in these and in these. So from 
24 possible inputs, possible ways that array could have been. 12 of them, 6 plus 4 plus 2. 12 of them have A less than B, and 12 of them have A bigger than B. So here it's equal. So for me, right now, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say, let's say, I'm going to say, uh, actually, I shouldn't have done that. Let me do this. Uh, tell me what you want to say. Do you want to say yes or no to this question? It doesn't matter because they're equal. If I say yes, then you are you have narrowed it down to the red boxes. If you say no, then it's the other guys. Let's just say no, okay? Let's just say no to this. In which case, my input cannot be this, cannot be this, cannot be this, okay? Okay, now, now he asks, um, uh, you know, some question. Let's say, so So he says, okay, so A is not less than B. So he knows that B is bigger than A. And you guys could be doing this on paper. If you want, you, you can propose a question to me. You can propose a comparison to me. So B is bigger than, double B is uh, less than A. So A is bigger than B. Yep. Now, let's say maybe you want to know is A less than C. What am I going to do? Before I just focus on one input and just say yes or no, I'm going to look at all possible inputs. And let me pick a different color, Daba, orange. And A less than C. A less than C, it means first and third guy. Yeah. So A is less than C here. A is less than C here and here. And uh, here A cannot be less than C. So I have 12 guys left. From where four of them have A less than C and eight of them have A bigger than C. What do you think I'm going to say to him, Daba? Yes or no? No, I guess. No, because I want to keep as many possibilities open. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the best example I can give you of this, you know that game, um, uh, 20 questions. Like, I'm thinking of an animal and you have to ask me questions. Like, is it, does it live in water? And if I say yes, you say, is it blue in color? And I say, no, yes, right? You know that game. Or you can think of a famous person. You say, I'm thinking of some famous person. So you say, is he, is he living or dead? And I say, dead. Was it a man or a woman? I say, woman, right? Have you, have you any of you ever played that question, a uh, game, and you have to like in 20 questions or less find the mm -hmm. answer? OK, the way often sometimes I play this game with my children, with animals. I don't commit to an animal. Of a, a donkey initially and then I see my child is very getting very close to the answers and so far I've told him it's a land animal it's gray in color and it's bigger than a horse okay and he says donkey uh, bigger machine bigger than horse bigger than a dog sorry and he, a land bigger than uh, let's say the question was was it land I said yes is it gray in color I said yes because I was thinking of donkey and he says Bigger than a dog. I said, yes, because I was thinking of donkey. They said, donkey. I quickly tried to think, is there any other animal? Is there any animal which is consistent with what I've said so far? Land, big, gray, and bigger than dog. Land, gray, bigger than dog. Land, gray, bigger than dog. And, um, well, right now I cannot think of one for that. Elephant. Uh, oh, yeah, elephant. So I, I say no. So even though I was thinking of donkey and they said donkey, I said no. Now, OK, you know, let's not get into the philosophical debate. Am I being honest or not? Because yes, I did think of donkey. But as far as the game is concerned, I haven't really cheated anybody. Because the info un answers I've given so far are also consistent with elephant. And I want the kid to have more fun. And I do that just for them to play more. So, so th that's what I'm doing here. I am going to draw this gout, dry guy out. I don't want to have him easy for him. So he said, is A less than C? Four of the guys have A less than C, eight have no. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to explicitly say no because of that. And so I'm going to cross out these guys. And we are down to eight candidates. Okay. 
Now he says, okay, so A is bigger than B and C. Ah, he wants to know between B and C. See, he can he wants to put A, B, C in order first. Maybe, or if you want to propose a different question, you can propose a different question. What do you want to propose right now? Do you want to know between B and C? Okay. Yes. Okay. So he asks now, is B big, less than C? So B and C is the second and third, second and third guy. Let's take a different color, green, second and third guy. I'll, I'll circle the ones where second, second guy is less than third guy. In here, it is less indeed. Here it is not. Here it is. Here it is. Please check my work. So I had eight guys surviving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From which one, two, three, four. In this case, it's again split, even split. Four of them have B less than C. Four of them have B uh, bigger than C. So Safi, for me, it's equal here. I'll say yes. I'll say yes to this question. Which, which case, I should cross out these guys. I should cross out this, cross out this, cross out this. And cross out this so the guys in green boxes are surviving okay okay so now he knows he, okay in his ma mind he knows this aha uh -huh, a is bigger than b a is bigger than c and b is less than c so it's b then c then a right he has figured this out okay but he still doesn't know where d goes so he needs to now ask me a bunch of questions to fit in the d I have given him a challenge to this whoever made this algorithm. Can you do it in less than six comparisons? Okay, so he will ask, let's say, uh, let's say, do you have a question you want to ask? What what's what's your next uh, comparison you want to do? Uh, is D um, higher than A? Okay, so is A less than D? Okay, let's check. Let's pick another color, brown color. A less than D. Is the first guy less than the fourth guy? First guy less than the fourth guy. In this one, um, first guy, yes. In this one, it is yes. In these ones, no. And these ones, no. So there's one yes and three no's. So what do you think I'm going to tell him? That if I tell him yes, he, 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 would, he would sort the array right away and say, aha, I did it in four. Questions. I want to prove to him that he cannot always do it in four or even five questions. So I'm going to say to him, no. So which means this guy is ruled out. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. So he's asked to, f okay, so D is not bigger than A. Mm. So he needs to know is D between C and A, right? So he will ask. Is uh, C less than D? Okay. All right. Let's pick my new color, purple. Let's see. C less than D. Third guy less than fourth guy. Third guy less than fourth guy. This one is yes. This one no. This one no. So one guy is yes and two are no's. So I'm going to again tell him no. He says, Ah, damn it. I've already asked five questions and I still don't know where to put the D. Right? So uh, he's, he's forced to ask one more question. So this guy's gone. And so now we are down to 4132 or 4231. He still doesn't know whether the D is bigger than B or less than B. So D could go at the beginning of BCA or between B and C. So he has to ask one more question to do that. And he says, you know, uh, he says, is D less than B? Um, okay. And so he's, and I, at this point, Baba, there's one this way, one this way. I tell him yes. Uh, I tell him yes. And he solves it. He says, okay, D is less than B. I know the final answer. And he says, D, B, C, A. That's the sorted version of the array that you gave me. But look what I've done. I forced him to ask six questions. Okay. 
um, where does the number six come from? How, how did I know that I can always force him to ask six questions? So what I, the game I played with you here, so what I do usually in class, on the, what is on the left side of the screen is what you, guys, uh, you see on the board. You guys collectively as a class ask me these questions. And what you see on the right side of the screen is I'm doing a piece of paper that I'm not showing you. Okay? And uh, did people understand how I forced him to reach six questions? And I can always, it doesn't matter which questions he starts with. He could start with, is A less than D, is C bigger than B, whatever. I will always force him to six questions. Do you see how? I will always force him to six questions. So you should, th that should start making you think. Okay, where am I? Possibilities I had. I had 24 possibilities, right? In the best case scenario, his question is such that it all breaks into 12 and 12. So if I tell him yes, he gets 12, he narrows down to 12 candidates. If I tell him no, he still is down to 12 candidates. And if his question is, if he's lucky, his, if his question is well done, it will break it down to six yeses and six noes. So I will just say yes or no, and I'll, he'll come down to six. Again, if he's lucky and his question is well done, six will come down to three. Three now cannot come down to one. It will be one or two. So I will give an answer such that it forces it to two. And two, he will ask, question will bring it to one. So look how many questions he asked. One. Each arrow is a question. Three, four, five. Something wrong here. Did I make a mistake? What's wrong here? 24 could become 12. 12 could become 6. 6 can become 3. 3 can become 1, but if I'm being malicious, or let's say being uh, just trying to be painful for him, not malicious, I will give the answer which leaves behind two candidates. And then he's asked, forced to ask one more question. And if he's lucky, Hmm. Something didn't add up here. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, because the idea here is that is every time you're trying to break half, right? So what's the log base two of twenty four? How much is that? It's uh. 2 to the power 4 is 16. 4 it's 4.58. 4 4 so if I were to do in a uh, ceiling, obviously because you cannot ask 4.58 questions, so you'll have to go higher. Uh, 4.58 will become 5. So, uh -huh. maybe, he, he, uh, yeah, in, in this case, so I should have said he cannot do less than five comparisons. Sorry. Uh, so I may not have been able to force him to six always. In, in this particular case, he reached six because at one point his question was such that he had four and eight. Like when, when we had. He had 12 candidates left. His question broke it into four and eight. But if it if his question was nicely balanced, he could do it in five, but he cannot do less than five. I should say less than five he cannot do. And five is the log of four factorial. So this 24 is four factorial. OK? So we are ready to write down our theorem statement. Uh, our theorem would be um, theorem. No sorting algorithm. And sort every possible array 
of size n. Can it, no sorting algorithm can work prop correctly uh, without doing at least log base 2 of n factorial and the ceiling of that. Let me, let me create some space here. I will write the other things later. Comparisons in the worst case. At least on some inputs, it will reach that much. So I need to put here ceiling. And this is log base 2, of course, OK? Of n factorial comparisons in the worst case. Uh, bad statement, right? I told you uh, this is not specific enough on what kind of algorithms are we talking about. About okay, so let's try this again. Let's be more proper about this theorem. No sorting algorithm, or let's say any sorting algorithm that works by comparing uh, by comparisons of elements of the input array must make at least um, yeah at least i'll write here log and factorial comparisons in the worst case okay and here um, let's put those things back there ceiling of this because if it's a fractional answer then you have to ask one more, like fill, fill that question. And it's important to write here, if you notice the difference between the first statement and this statement, is I specified comparisons of elements of the input array must make at least this many comparisons in the worst case. OK? It's the proof. Proof, I kind of did it to you, but we're going to, I'm going to write it again. Uh, right? There are n factorial possible configurations of input of size n. Yeah. The input can come in n factorial possible configurations. Is you know the, the biggest guy is in the third cell and the second biggest guy is in the fourth cell and the blah 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 blah. Right. Now each comparison can reduce the set of possibilities by at most half yes. uh, in the worst case. Yani, uh, let's say you ask a query. Let's say you have 10,000 candidates left. And you ask a query, is blah, blah, blah bigger than blah, blah, blah? The 10,000, let's say, splits into 2,000 and 8,000. In the worst case, if the input was from those 8,000, then you'll have 8,000. In the best case, is like, so you don't expect anything better than half, right? Don't expect it will sh suddenly shrink from 10,000 to 100 just because you're lucky. When we are computing worst case, we're not talking about the lucky cases yet. Worst case means worst case. You're having a bad day. Your input is just not cooperating. So each comparison can reduce the set of possibilities at most half. So thus, log base 2 of n comparisons are needed in the minimum to reduce the set of possibilities log base 2 of what? Guys, please tell me when I'm making a mistake. Yeah, log base 2 by is this a function. Uh, Needed a minimum to reduce the set of possibilities from n factorial down to 1. OK? Done. That's the proof. Did people follow that? I mean, having seen the previous screen, did you guys understand this mm -hmm. logic? Huh? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. Now, but wait, what does this have to do with n log n? I started the day by claiming that this is, you can't do better than n log n. Well, look. If you give me a minute, you will see the connection to n log n. Okay, log of, of n. I'm not going to keep writing base 2. You understood it's base 2, yeah. So it's log of 1 times 2 times 3 times kada kada times n. Yeah. That's n factorial. And this is less than or equal to less than or equal. I will write the equal sign later. Log of, if I replace each of those numbers by n, obviously this is less than n times n times n, oops, times n, which is log of n to the power n. Now you know how log rules work, yeah? This is equal to n log n, right? You know, you know that you can bring out the power. Yes. Sorry. Um, right. So, so on one hand, log of n factorial, right, is less than or equal to n log n. On the other hand, another thing you can do. Um, Uh, uh, yeah, so start with this guy on this, oops, sorry. On the other hand, this guy is bigger or equal to and I'm done here. If I start with n half, yeah, n half times n half plus 1 I'm just going to take the, the big, the half of the numbers, starting in the middle, right? So let's say if n was 10, so instead of 1 times 2 times 3 all the way to 10, let's just look at 6 times, uh, or even starting with uh, actually n half plus 1, which is, um, which is bigger or equal to log of n half times n half times n half, which is log of uh, n half to the power n half. Right? The, so which is n half, n over 2. So I'll just write the rest by hand. This is bigger than or equal to this. This is equal to this, which is I bring the power out, n over 2, log, n over 2. Uh, this can be simplified as half uh, n log n, and the minus log 2 is minus n half log 2. Log 2 is just 1. So this is just, OK? So from the two things here, what do we get? That log base 2, obviously. All this is base 2 of n factorial is less than or equal to 1 times n log n. Check from the left. n is bigger than or equal to? Half, which is 0 0.5 n log n. So the conclusion of all, the grand conclusion of all this, and that's the last thing I'm going to say for today, is that log, because you're trapped by constant and that function, log of n factorial is, this is why we needed the big thetas and all those things, is theta of the n log n function. So asymptotically, we cannot do better than n log n. Okay. Thank you.
Uh, I hope you followed the one on the right. If you didn't, I'm just going to write here for for sake of completion of this video. You can you can go ahead go ahead and uh, leave if you have a class as in a concrete example. For example, if you had one times two times three dot 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 ten, what I've done is I said I replaced it by just six times seven, so I only took part of the product. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Time 10 is much bigger than just saying 5 times 5 times 5, 5 times. So 10 factorial is bigger than 5 to the power 5. That's the logic I've used on the right. And so if you take log of that, you get 5 log 5. 5 here is n over 2. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just put that so that if you didn't understand what I was doing on the right, now you understand. And so this way, the video is more uh, complete this way. Thank you. And um, I will uh, please send me, do send me please all the questions you have on QuickSort, whatever you have not understood, so that uh, I, I know what, what points I need to explain to you nicely. OK, thank you. Thank you, thank you Professor. Thank you, Professor. Okay.